With our first day underway, day one had some lofty goals. We spent the better part of the morning leveling the trailer on uneven ground, which posed so many different difficulties, but we got through it. Using jacks, one on each corner, we eventually got the entire bed leveled. The next task on hand was removing unwanted metal equipment off of the trailer. We will be putting our main support structure on the C-beam, which needs to be flat and level. We're now moving on to the subfloor framework. Using 2x6x10s, we sandwich the boards together, placing one underneath the C-beam and one being flush to tack into. The joists were then installed 16 inches on center. The next step will be securing the framework to the trailer with carriage bolts and insulating the subfloor. Using a hammer drill, I am drilling into the side of the trailer where our six inch carriage bolts will then secure the frame to the trailer itself. Here you can see our carriage bolts inserted through the C-beam and the subfloor framework. We decided to secure the bolts on the inside of the trailer for added security. We secured the subfloor framework with six inch carriage bolts about every two feet on the trailer. I then went ahead and sealed in with spray foam any gaps or cracks left. We decided to use R30 attic insulation. Using a combination of liquid nails and framing nails, we safely and securely fastened our plywood onto our subfloor framework. We also went ahead and put lag bolts through the C-beam and the plywood into our subfloor framework for added security and protection. Week two started off with a bang. Literally, we're nailing up our walls. We first began by installing the sole plates the entire length of the trailer. Next, we began pre-assembling the north wall on the ground to be raised up. After the bathroom wall was up, it was time to move on to the side walls. The east bathroom wall was pre-assembled on the ground as well and ready to be lifted as soon as everything was nailed in. After a few minor opportunities, our 24 inch window became an 18 inch window and we were ready to lift the wall. Sweet leg shot. Building Construction 101. Did I do that right? Yeah, there it is. Our son Kingston even decided to come lend a hand. There's me lifting with my back. So as we raise the wall, we want to ensure that the studs are secure against the sole plate as to not have the wall flip over the trailer. We line up the studs with our pre-existing marks and then we're going to move on to toenailing in the studs with the nail gun. We ensure the wall is level and we install the top plate. This wooden beam helps to level and stabilize, while this wooden beam helps to add support. That's Walter White, he's our workhorse, hard at it. We decided to extend our day into a late night work session and it totally paid off. We were able to get the first floor completely framed in. With the frame level and secure, it is now time to add sheathing around the entire house. As well as nailing the sheathing to the studs, we also used liquid nail. The next big challenge had to do with framing around the wheel well. We were nervous as we had never done this before and wanted to make sure we did it correctly. So we traced a stencil and then we cut along our plywood. Not too bad, right? Our trailer was constructed well enough that the stencil for the wheel wells worked well on both sides. We are pretty happy with this week's progress. Not only did we get our framing complete, but the sheathing is up on the first floor. Our tiny home also survived a crazy thunder, lightning, and rainstorm. Although she did get a little wet, that's all right. We'll see you later. Have a great week. Wow, week three is here already. This week we have goals of finishing up our lofts and wrapping our house. We built the lofts on level ground and then hoisted them to the top of our tiny home. To better support the loft and our future sliding wood door, 
the bathroom partition wall was installed. Once the lofts were square with the first floor, they were then attached with three and a half inch exterior screws. After the subfloor was added, it was time to begin framing the second floor walls. This addition that you see here was to accommodate for the seven inch bump out of the lofts and to keep the roof line consistent throughout the length of the trailer. Extra support was added to the corner of the lofts to help stabilize. Break time with a little bit of pizza. The loft walls were framed at 24 inches on center to save on weight and material. The connecting walls were then finished to complete the second floor frame. Once the second floor frame was built, it was then time to install the sheathing. The corners of the loft were then insulated due to access and the sheathing was then complete. We had a late work night on Sunday and got one third of our house wrapped. I can't believe we're already at week four. This was such a fantastic week. Having the house all prepped and ready, we decided to wrap her up. Once our home was protected from the elements, we went on to work on our rooftop rafters, placing them at 24 on center and using hurricane ties to secure them to the loft. We then moved on to installing our windows. Yep, eight in our tiny little home. It's now siding time and we went with metal. I wonder if you can guess the colors we chose. We chose metal because of its lightweight. We also will be doing cedar accents along the house. After four weeks of hard work, we decided to go on vacation.